Hello and welcome to the Stitchy Podcast, Froggy Pod. Uh, my name's Sherry and you're very welcome. This is somewhere where I just natter on about the things that I'm making and people I'm inspired by and stuff. First of all, the first thing I'd like to say, oh sorry, and I'll put all of my, um, where you can contact me underneath because you don't want to hear me go through all of that. First of all, uh, two apologies. First, I apologize for my hair because it's been a long time and I have a hair appointment on May the 5th, which I am counting the days down till. In the meantime, um, I once, I think I've mentioned this before, I once had a report when I was, I think I was about six, um, from a teacher saying that I always was always so well presented and always, you know, looked really neat. But then lunchtime happens and she comes in looking like she's been dragged through a hedge backwards. And that's how I feel like I look. Anyway, the other thing I would like to apologise for is that I spectacularly deleted uh, my last video which is still a little bit of a mystery to me because it's the, the are you sure button comes up and my I've got a really old um, Mac MacBook that I use, I've had for years. And I do have a lot of tabs open, I will admit to that. And I, it, sort of, it was really, it was being really slow and I clicked on it and it was sort of like, do you want to delete? And in slow motion, the page then reloaded and and I clicked on that button and it was like, no. So the whole thing has gone. I did read your comments because they popped through on my phone. So I'm so sorry about that. If you took the time to comment, etc. cetera. But, um, so I would say this is episode, but ugh, I, don't know, I don't know what episode it is. But there were quite a few comments on there about some people liked the City Podcast name and some people said keep bloggy pod. Um, so I don't know what to do really. But anyway, thank you for watching. So I just wanted to um, tell you what I've been doing really. So I have been absolutely obsessed with watching um, YouTube videos and looking at Instagram accounts and Pinterest, etc. with quilting. I desperately want to make a quilt. And I want to make all the quilts. You know, I want to do a, a patchwork quilt. I want to do a hexi. I want to do a log cabin. I want to do everything. Um, I saw a really lovely one yesterday in the... Um, oh, we went out out for the first time. Like everybody. Um, when I say out out, that's a reference to a comedian, a Mickey Flanagan. If you know what I'm talking about, you'll know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, you'll think, what is she talking about? But anyway, it was... Um, we just went out to a few, to a couple of antique shops. My favourite thing to do, just wander around. There was a lovely quilt in there, which I know men and I are in about. It's not really the colours I wanted, but it's looked handmade. It was just lovely. Anyway, way better than anything I could make. But then if I buy that, I might not make one. Anyway, so I've been collecting. So Emma, so the first lady. So the one thing I'd like to say actually before I start this is I look around me at all the things that I'm doing and the things that make me happy and the people that inspire me. And there are so many amazing, strong ladies in business out there that I realised the other day how much a part of my life they all are because so much, so many things that I do are inspired by or led by or I buy from them and yeah. So anyway, the first thing is a lady called Emma, who is Vintage Sewing Box. I will put all the links underneath this time. I always say that, and I got a lot of messages last time. People said they couldn't hear what I said. 
I'm sure you know the account. And she, she's a lovely lady. And I said to her the other day, she's, she's very calming and she makes you feel like you can definitely do this. You know, you can definitely make what I'm doing. She does um, lots of hexes and little embroideries in the middle, which is so lovely. So anyway, I've been putting together, I won't show you them all. And I started off by doing, um, by stitching these, and then I started gluing. I've got my glue stick. I might be showing you that upside down, I don't know. But I've got my, got my glue stick. See how we go with that. So these are all stitched, but look. That one's Liberty. So I was listening to somebody the other day. Um, I'm not doing a very good job with it. Oh, I love that. It's my little rosebud one. So some of these are just off cuts of fabric, you know, from things that I've done in the past, but, you know, that we all have things that we're left with. And she was saying how she mixes the weights, so she'll mix, mix quilting weights, and um, so this is Tanner Lawn Liberty. This is a normal cotton, and this is more of a quilting weight cotton. So I'm going to see how I go with that, because I don't know. I think you can get puckering and things. But I think what I'm going to do with this one, which is what I was saying to Emma, I think I'm going to do a cushion with this one, because I think if I attempt anything more than that, it's not going to happen. Seen lots of things on there. You can just you can do all one colour and then all another and all another, or you can mix it all in. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but that's the first thing. And I'm just enjoying, I keep it in here, which is what some flowers, some flowers that my daughter-in-law sent me for Mother's Day year before last. And I just, I've just got loads and loads of scraps of fabric in here, which just bring me so much joy. But I'm going to keep it. My mum bought me a few years ago, loads and loads of these little, these little suitcases, which you see everywhere. This one actually is full of, um, all bits and pieces that she's bought me over the years. Look at that, all the lovely little bits that she's bought me. Um, I just wasn't quite sure what to keep in them and I think I'm actually going to keep all of these sorts of things in there. Because then they're covered up and they're dust free. Anyway, polka dot one, then you forgot that. So that's happening. And the other thing, oh, and the other lady is Larissa who is stitching notes, who um, I've been following for years. I think it goes back to when we used to do uh, ATCs, artist trading cards, sort of swap, tiny little cards that we used to embroider and swap with each other. Ali, a lady called Ali used to organise it. Anyway, Larissa Stitching Notes, again, I'm sure you know of her. Her page is incredible and she is such an inspiration to me. And she, she did, she's done a couple of stitch alongs and I've not been brave enough to do, but anyway. I've also been watching lovely Kate of, is it Last Homely House? And she does lovely quilts and she's inspired me too. And so what I've done is I've got loads of old shirts of Keith and the boys that I've cut up, ones that I've liked that I've cut up over the years. These are just bits of them. I've got loads of these. Um, and the kind of, and actually they're all the kind of colours that I want anyway, sort of pinks and blues and greys is what I'm after with touches of green maybe. That's the plan. And then I've got some of these which are favourite fa uh, fabrics that I want to add in, that kind of thing going on. And, and a bit of blue maybe, darker blue for a pop color. So I don't know, I'm nowhere near cutting it up yet. So I was thinking log cabin, then I was thinking actually Kate was doing one which, oh, which she put on eBay. I don't know if you saw it and she sold this quilt, um, raised so much money for, um, and she donated it to Fruity Knitting. Oh, goodness. That was such an amazing amount of money. It just shows you what an amazing community, the sewing knitting community is, I think. But anyway, she was doing a lovely one on there, which is the one that she sold. And I thought I could do that. I think I could do that. And also these fabrics, which I bought when I went out with some lovely friends. Uh, Gaynor and Karen, when we went to the quilt show, which was, must have been, oh, 
year and a half or something ago now. And we all liked these and I haven't used those yet and I might put them in. But again, they're a bit thicker so I don't know what to do. But anyway, that's all my collection of fabrics. Ooh. We'll see what happens. So that's that. that they're my plans. Um, the other thing that I've been doing, another lady that I admire very much, well, I'm I'm doing, I'm going to start again, is I, this is uh, my friend Sandra, who did a pattern, and I think actually this is a free download on, on Ravelry now. I'm only going to show you the front page because you've got my scroll and everything else. And it is the Nature's Walk um, blanket. And I was ever so pleased with myself because Sandra did a, a little tutorial where she taught you how to um, follow a pattern and I did it so I was quite pleased so I've, I've probably shown you these before and the I'll show you the colours actually these are, so they're bigger squares and they're all in these stone washed sheeps, sheepsies I can't say that I've been able to say that so this is in my somewhere over the rainbow bag. This actually was done, I think, for something Jules, So Sweet Violet and Amy did a couple of years ago, I think. Liberty. So anyway, um, these are the colours. So you've got that and that. And they've all got this lovely stone wash look, which you can see really clearly on that one, I think. But not necessarily on the grey one. And that colour, this, this all came as a set from I cannot remember where. And that colour. If I hold them all up, you can see what I'm muffling on about. So these are the colours and the grey. Oh, that's someone at my front door. So sorry about that, that was someone at the door. I got talking. Um, so that's my colour palette. Well, like I said, it was a kit. I didn't choose it. Well, I did choose this one, but anyway. So. That's that, and as I say, that's Sandra, and it's her nature's walk. And it's one of those things, that I was enjoying it so much, and I was so pleased with myself, and I don't quite know why I stopped. So I'm gonna do that. I'm still doing my granny stripe. That's just a long-term uh, project that I just pick up and I love. Um, I've got some other things to show you in a minute. I'm going to show you quickly what's um, going into the shop or is in the shop and the advent, uh, which has gone on a new website. So we've got a new website. We have been talking about doing this for so long and Friends have said you you know you you won't look back and it's a big it's a big leap when you've been we've been on Etsy for years, um, and we did it mainly because we wanted to kind of reflect our who we are, and for it to be more like of what we've we kind of want it to be like a little hub, but it's at the moment it's just got because it's an I've, I've got a couple of blog posts that came from the other one but. There's just a couple of blog posts on there and the shop. There's not much on there at the moment, but there is going to be. And there's also, if you do go onto the website, there's a little newsletter, which I'll be sending. Not, not a lot, because you know me, I, I'm not exactly going to be doing it every week. Like I said, I'm going to do a podcast every week and I don't. But I'll, I'll probably be a monthly newsletter. Um, which will be useful if you've already got the advent, because that's when I can say, if you don't do Instagram, when the next payment will be due and all things like that. Anyway, so on the website, we last Friday, the 9th, we put the advent calendar up, which I know seems really probably early to do that, but they are so much work and we put up nearly twice the amount that we put up last year. So it's a big commitment of our time. So we just need to know really how many we're making and how many we're likely to sell, etc. Um, and I just, we were just blown away. We just couldn't believe it. Um, a that you choose to spend your money with us for the advent that's and then you know advents are quite a lot of money that was amazing 
Um, and, but also that you came over to the new website. I think that was lovely too. We were, I felt quite emotional actually when that, ha when that all happened on last Friday. So the advent, there are a few left. I think there are literally about eight left. And um, we've kept back a few that we're going to put up um, in a few weeks' time. We always do that because we like to know that everything's underway okay and they're all, when they're dyed up basically and we know everything's ready, then we'll release the last few. That's, that's just what we do. So the advent, which I'm really excited about this year because um, my lovely friend Kay, who is a uh, briny bear, she's one of the bakery bears, is doing a pattern. And I'm just, I'm beyond excited that that's going in. I was so thrilled. Um, it won't be using up all of the, all of the minis, uh, but it's a, it's a gorgeous pattern that she's doing and, and we're really excited about it. And it's basically the advent is 24, 20 gram minis and I will try and put some pictures in here because um, to give you an idea if you haven't had it before. And in each 20 gram mini, so this is a 20 gram mini. And each 20 gram mini we wrap up into, tish, into tissue paper and then we put it in a little fabric bag. And it has a little narrative in there which um, is centred around the characters of Foxglove Wood and Foxglove Cottage. Um, which is a little narrative... Um, set in the late 1800s and you loved it last couple of years so we thought well do you know what we're we're going to do it again but it, we've expanded it so you're going to meet some new people and there's um it's called the winter gathering a foxglove tale and there's a bit of a a bit of a christmas adventure on there um you also get a few little gifts along the way and it all comes presented in a a a nice box, keepsake box, and you also get the option to add on a sock set and project bag and hand embroidered bag, but I think the hand embroidered bag one has sold out and I can't do any more of those because they, they just take me so long. So anyway, if you did want one, they're on the website, a few left. If not, disregard what I've just said. Anyway, the other thing that's going on that's actually, we actually put it on last night and again it went, which we were... We've, we've, our idea is that we're going to stock the shop so there'll be lots in there so that when you go there if you want to knit something or make something or embroider something it's going to be there but um, best laid plans and all of that so the, we've been doing monthly minis which is colourways inspired by a particular flower we, we used to do the wildflower minis uh, club which was inspired by flowers of the month this is more a single flower so just to take you through so we had january with snowdrops and then we had hellebores hellebores how can you say it and then last month was tulips and the idea is that they sort of one they go into each one and then this month the one that went last night was um bluebells and christopher does the um, artwork as well to try and make it a bit more special for you and we've had a bit of fun with these because the bluebell wood depending on um, the time of day where it is how uh, shaded it is and what bluebell it is will look so different so yeah we've had a bit of fun and like I said we've hopefully that you will agree that, that transitions quite nicely from that so if lots of people are using it in blankets and um, habitation shawl and things like that so we're trying to make it so that it blends so that is a, they are the bluebell minis that is a bluebell main skein i think there are a few of those left in the store but they are going back in on friday so we're dying more up to go in the shop friday the other thing that will be in the shop Friday, we've dyed up a few extra of these. This is called number six. And this is a colorway inspired by a lady called Anna Maria Garthwaite. And this, she was a prolific designer, again, a very strong lady in a very much a men's world. And I think the design for this one was 1941 and the design was just called number six. And she used to design for silk, um, 
silk designs. And this was number six. So this was which I brilliantly haven't bought, but there was the design is these kind of colors. And we were so inspired by her, so we thought we're gonna do some more of those. So that's going in Friday. And the other thing is, I will show you the fabric because the yarns are dyed, but they are not skate. So this fabric, which is, um, I just love it. I absolutely love it. It's 100% cotton. And it's a fabric that I used when I first started making bags, actually. Look at that. It's just something about it. It just, I'm gonna put some, oh, put some of that in my quilt. So this is, the, so this is going to be, this has kind of inspired a con new collection that we're hoping to get into a shop this Friday. Certainly some parts of the collection, not all of them. And it's going to be these kind of colors. So lovely soft pinks, apricots, greens, and the neutral background. And it's going to be uh, yarns, lots of different bases, and also some bags. I did have some lovely, uh, completely not brought, had some lovely soft uh, linen, pink linen, and it's going to, there's oh, all sorts, but it's all going to be all sorts of things. There's going to be pouches and there will be um, some French soaps and uh, pins, all sorts of things going in there. Um, oof. So that's hopefully coming Friday, which is not a lot of use, I'm just showing you fabric, but um, the yarns are lovely. So that's that. Um, I've got a bit of paper here. Sorry to make a noise. And it's in great big letters so I can read it without my glasses on. Now, so what I've been doing, I said last time I've been, I'm gonna doing a painting course and it's actually um, Billy Shoal. Again, I'll put the link underneath. A couple of you actually messaged to say you were doing her course and on there you can, um, a bit like show and tell, you know, where you can show what you've done. I'm not quite brave enough to do that yet. But when I was showing painting on my vlog, the one before last, the not deleted one, some of you were asking what paints I was using, etc. So I thought I would show you. So this actually comes, this is the box. So it's aquarelle, aquarelle. And the tubes. Um, did I show you these before? I may have done and they all fell out, so I'm not going to do that again. Anyway, that's the set. You can mix it on there. I've got um, a plate that I use and just and a, and a mixing doodah. I really recommend those. They're, they're kind of, re they're, they're artist quality, so they're a bit more expensive, but they're lovely. Have lovely translucence and staying power. Oh, I my scarf. So this, which I was wearing actually, with what I'm wearing now, and I took it off because I thought if I wear this, I'm just gonna get so hot and flustered, it's gonna be unbelievable. But this is a scarf that she sells on her website as well. I'm not affiliated with Billy Shoal at all, I just thought I would share it with you. I'm not gonna be able to keep it on because I should get too hot. But it's a little silk scarf that she's selling on there as well. And actually, I think if you signed up for the course, you got a discount on this or something. I should keep it on for a minute, but I'm gonna get really hot. <sighs> painting, that's what I've been doing. Yeah, oh, we've been lo lots of painting. You don't need to see my painting. It's not particularly good. The other thing that I'm doing, um, I'm a big Nicky Franklin fan. If you know, this is coming off. Um, I'm a big Nicky Franklin fan. And if you've watched this before, you will know that. Um, I think what she, I just love her stuff and I couldn't resist this. It's a little, I love everything. I love all her packaging. It's a little, um, pin cushion. So I had, I've got it here to show you. I actually remembered it. I thought, oh, I should have brought it. So and basically you get, you, you get how to make it and you get all of these. Look at these fabrics. How lovely are they? I just, honestly, if you get fabrics, you'll know what I mean, but I'm just happy to know they're mine, just to look at them and think, 
they're mine. My husband thinks I'm just a little bit crazy. You've put it back in there, you've put it back in there. I said, yeah, I know I've put it back in there because it's lovely. So I'm keeping it in there until I'm ready. And um, no, I'm definitely not wrapping it up again in the tissue that I came in. Definitely not doing that. Um, because this is what came in my um, Nikki Franklin advent, I think about two years ago. And it was a dear little pin cushion that I use every day. But I, I'm always sewing, so I don't just use one, I use lots. So I'm going to make that one. And then when I was out yesterday, I found this, which is a teeny tiny little teacup and saucer. And I thought that would make another lovely little pin cushion and for your pins. So I was over the moon when I found that. And some of the other things I found, I will show you. Look at this. This is beautiful. Hand embroidered. So I don't know if you would be interested. I was going to have a little section on our new website for vintage. Because I think something like that, I don't know if people use them as, I wouldn't put anything on that. Certainly I wouldn't put anything on that that would mark it. Don't know if people have dressing tables like they used to, but I think that would look amazing in, on a quilt or on a cushion or something like that. So I don't know. I don't know whether it's something that you would like or not. Anyway, I also got these. Look at these. I love them. I love them, love them. So yeah, I'm, I'm sort of don't know what to do whether to do that or not I have a think let me know what you think um, and the other thing that I've got oh I've got this book which I have wanted this book for ages and I came across that as well yesterday Green Fingers and it's just full of beautiful um, poems oh, it's, oh I love it oh, look at see if I can show you the cover actually I don't know what it is about me and cover me and actual the actual covers but I do love it look at that and this is nine I think it's 1934 I just want to know who owned this nothing written in this one actually I'd love to know who owned that and who bought it for who or anyway and the other lovely book that I ordered because I saw it I love her website her, her um, Instagram is Everlastings because uh, it's dried flowers she actually lives just along the coast really and her name is what's her name Beck Partridge and she's botanical underscore tales on Instagram but again I'll put the link underneath and um, basically it's all dried I said basic I keep saying basically um, it's all about how to dry flowers and inspiration for what to do when you've done it. Um, and she actually said, I think, that she, this all started because she'd neglected some flowers that she'd been sent and they literally had died and become almost skeletal. And there's a part in, um, in Ola Holmes with, um, when she's with her mother, Helena Bonham Carter, and there's this bunch of flowers and, and the same thing. They've all dried up and they're desiccated you know they're really old and I just thought god they're lovely and in my room I've got lots of um cow you know dead cow parsley there's a hashtag on Instagram it's hashtag lovely dead crap and I'm quite happy on there looking on that beautiful stuff anyway um food I have not I'm still making soups actually because just because I love soups my cooking's changed a little bit now with the sunshine um, started making more things like coleslaws and pizzas and things like that. And yeah, just slightly fresher foods, if you like, but still as many veg as I can, really. And what have I been watching? Morse. Did I tell you that last time? But we, I subscribed to um, Britbox and the entire Morse is on there. Couldn't be happier. Oh, Prince Philip. So the crown, I might watch the crown again. It's, it's not Prince Philip that he was, you know, he was 99. He had an amazing life. He had a very privileged life, a very comfortable life. I think it's just um, 
the Queen and it's just the passing of an era. I was talking to my friend Nikki and we were just saying it's, it's just a passing of a time almost. And when he kisses her and, oh, anyway. Yeah, so I might watch The Crown again. I think that's it. So there's going to be a, a short vlog at the end because uh, like everybody, there's not been a whole lot going on. Probably quite a bit of cooking on there again. And, um, oh, this, look at this. Do you know a film called Fern Gully? It's Fern Gully. Actually, it's a sad film because it's about the forest all being pulled down, but I think it's an asparagus fern. <coughs> Love that. Good luck. You have moved in with me. Good luck. And the last thing is, if you're one of our lovely patrons, you would know this because we put a little video up to introduce you to him. But at the end of the last video, I or in that last video, I talked to you about we had new fur baby. So I'll put you some photos in here because our new fur baby is a cat called Tommy. And he is, he's out, his name is actually, it's Mr. Tom Hanks. We thought, A, I love Tom Hanks. So much value to be had out of the waiting room in the vets, calling Mr. Tom Hanks for his checkup. Um, also Hanks, yarn. Um, but he's Tommy to his friends. He already has quite a few nicknames. Um, he is, he was there, we, we've been waiting to get a, a cat. Um, we kept trying to get a rescue cat for a long, long time, months actually. And um, because we already had two dogs and they don't have the facilities, I think, and the ability at the moment to, to check if they're okay with dogs, you know, we weren't getting much of a chance. It, most of the cats that came up just said no, to, no with dogs. And then this cat came up and uh, he was actually called Casper. And Chris noticed him and said, oh, but a cat can go with dogs. Anyway, they rang us straight away and said, we think this is the one for you. And unbeknown to us, he'd been there for four months because he was so nervous. Um, he'd come from a multi-cat, multi-animal home, I think. I think he was quite neglected. He was quite skinny when they got him. and. They had to keep him from that long until they felt he could be rehomed. So anyway, he is frightened of his own shadow. He's just leaving. He's just in two rooms now. He's met the dogs on numerous occasions. Monty couldn't really give a monkeys. I mean, great, it's a cat. He's lived with cats. Archie's like, that's a cat. There's, what's, why is there a cat in the house? So, um, and so it's going to take some time. No, no aggression. I mean, the, the dogs are fine with the cat, but, but he's frightened of his own shadow. Anyway, like I said, I'll put you in some footage. He's so affectionate. He suddenly started playing and um, he comes up and just gently kisses you with his nose and sits with me of an evening now. So yeah, I've realised I hadn't told you about him. And um, I'll tell you a little bit more about him as we go on. Um, so, th uh, yes, yeah, so thank you to our lovely patrons. Thank you so, so much. You make such a difference to us. And um, thank you for watching. <laughs>